I bring before my mind's eye a scene which would imply that I am the one that I want to be, or that my friend or others are as I would like them to be. I try to confine it within the framework of the golden rule, that is, doing unto others what I would love them to do unto me, and not to go outside of that rule. It's such an easy thing to practice. Would I like the good that I ask of them? Yes. Like it for myself? All right, and ask it for them. Bring them before your mind's eye and dare to assume that what you are seeing in your mind's eye is true. Now, there is a definite technique to it. A simple, simple technique. If I can share with you what I do, and it works, I bring them into my mind's eye and I work myself up into an emotional state. It's like a peculiar rhythm. I breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out and suddenly I reach a certain point and then one deep inhalation as though I'm setting it up in a time exposure before my own mind. I set it up and all of a sudden I have a deep, deep inhalation and every pore of my being explodes. And then I do nothing beyond that. It's taking that scene and setting it up in a time explosion before the eternal event. And then I explode it and then let life develop it. And life develops it. And then I get the call or I get the wire or I get a letter confirming that which I did. And I do nothing to make it so. I simply believe implicitly in Jesus Christ, but I have found him. I have found him as my own wonderful human imagination. I believe that all things are possible to him. He has ways and means that the mortal mind knows not of. So I do not care. If I do not see clearly how it could possibly be, it makes no difference to me. I simply bring it to my mind's eye what I want to see, see it clearly, explode it, and then let it be. Now, it could be tomorrow. It could be a month. It could be even years. I am not concerned. I have done it, and that's all that matters as far as I am concerned. Everything has its own appointed hour. See the vision? That was my vision. The vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens. It will flower. If it be long, wait. It is sure, and it will not be late. A little chicken, 21 days. A man, 9 months. A horse, 12 months. A little lamb, 5 months. And there is a time interval between that impregnation and the actual embodiment of that state. And I do not know the time intervals. I only know that all I do, I do it. And if that time interval is a day, well, it's a day. If it's going to be a month, let it be a month. I do not know the time intervals between my vision of you being the one that you want to be and you becoming that, which I have assumed that you are. I do not know the time interval. But there are time intervals between the impregnation and the birth of that impregnation. But I tell you, it works. So I do not need to ask anyone or turn to anyone. Not that I am not saying to you, turn to me. If you have confidence that I can use a, a law that you are not yet aware of or feel that you cannot quite master it, I invite you to turn to me. Cost you nothing. I charge not one nickel for it. To me, it's a simple technique, a simple process. And I look upon it just as this. If this hand is itching now, and the back of the hand is itching, this hand is easier for me to use to scratch it and relieve the itch than to take this and try to reach it with my fingers. I can't get back and reach it. But I can get it with this. It's the same body. So I call upon myself. If you cannot yourself, I would say, alleviate the itch, the itch may be for money, the itch may be for recognition, the itch may be for something, well then ask the one in whom you have confidence. 
If you have confidence in the speaker, all I ask me. I tell you, I don't charge. I do not charge one penny, neither do I accept any money. I don't. You simply, if you feel like it, you ask me. And I will, to the best of my ability, simply feel within myself that things are as you desire them to be, providing it comes within the code of my, what I call my ethical code, that it is not at the expense of another aspect of my being. Don't ask me to hurt anyone in this world because I could not. I would not ask anyone to be hurt. But if you want recognition in this world, you want money in this world, you want comfort in this world, I see nothing wrong in that because these things I would want for myself. So I put them within the frame of the golden rule and ask for them. It's a simple, simple technique. So let us discuss how things are brought into being. Well, how are they brought into being? By your own wonderful imaginal acts. That's how they're brought into being. Because your imagination is God. Your imagining that is God in action. Do you know what you would love for yourself and for your loved ones in this world? Assume that you have it. And that assumption, though at the moment, is denied by your senses, denied by reason. If you persist in it, because you believe in him, it will harden into fact. And no power in the world can stop it. It can stop it. But I can tell you the interval of time between your assumption and its hardening into fact. But I promise you from experience, it will harden into fact. But do it in love. And I tell you, whenever you are in doubt, do the loving thing. And you've done the right thing. If ever in doubt, ask a very simple question. Would I like it done to me? If you can answer in the affirmative, then do it. And you cannot go wrong if you use that as your guide. Now, before we go into the silence, let me once more try to explain this simple, simple technique. You will have to practice it and use your own rhythm. You don't have to be in church to do it. You can be sitting here tonight. You can be at home listening to nice music. You can be simply relaxing with a drink. It doesn't matter what you're doing and where you are. But we want to do it. Get into a lovely quiet, relaxed frame. No so-called holy attitude. Forget that. You're holy when you're in love. God is love. So you would love it for someone else. That is all that you need. That move. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she actually had it? If he had it? If they had it? Also, you know exactly what you want now. And then you imagine you are seeing them. You can see them in your mind's eye and see them vividly. And then breathe yourself into a rhythm. They're telling you that they have it. And you're getting yourself worked up emotionally because they're telling you that they have exactly what you know they would want in this world. And then you reach a certain point and you explode. Something actually goes out of you. It's power. You work yourself up into a certain emotional state and then suddenly you explode. And you feel everything go out. And you cannot repeat it. There's no desire to repeat it. It was an actual psychic, sexual act. But there's no physical act. There is no evidence of any physical act. But it's the same thrill that you would were it a physical act. Work yourself right up into that state and then let it go. And do not raise one finger to make it so. Any more than you would after impregnation. What could you do after Pregnancy is taking place. Nothing. Leave it alone and let it take place in its own good time. Now let us go into the silence. 